Welcome to the October edition of Around OHS. I'm Avery. And I'm Emma. Let's jump right in. There's a new place to get a snack here at Oakville. Abby, Ethan, and Brendan tell us about the new vending machine. You may have seen the new vending machine in the Gym A lobby. Ms. Darby and her Marketing 2 class tell us a little more about it. So the vending machine project um, comes from the inspiration of our um, career and technology program that we have at Oakville High School. And so we used to have this school store that was run at the Claw Mart that used to be part of our department. Um, and that has so since then become the concession stand. Um, it was just kind of getting hard to maintenance and man with students and that. So um, a lot of schools around have started to make their school store become a vending machine. And so that has kind of brought life to kind of another school store within the business department um, to be run by the business students to um, kind of fulfill that need of a school store. It's taught me a lot about how to market to people and how to get people interested in something and how to sort of spread the word about stuff. The importance of listening to your target market and like if your market doesn't like what you're selling they're not going to buy it and you're not going to profit off it. I feel like the vending machine would be a lot different if our class had like decided everything but we sent out like a survey so. Let's hear from some people that use the machine daily. I always buy gum and I like buying those protein bars. Everything's like really accessible in there and especially because a lot of athletes like to buy gum because it's just kind of like I don't know it's like an energy boost almost. It just helps everybody. With Ethan Cornell and Abby Hasey behind the camera, I'm Brennan Strickland for Iran OHS. It's amazing to see how the marketing students are finding success in their new vending machine. Are there other students finding success this year in band? Naya and Allie give an update on their marching band season. This year, marching band has had one of the best seasons. With this marching band season coming to an end, let's see what the band has to say. So our show this year is called With Love. Um, if you've seen the show during our football games, we haven't been in uniform. It's like Queen of Hearts, um, Alice in Wonderland themed, um, and it's a lot of fun. We have songs like All By Myself and Happy Together by the Turtles, and it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool show. The Murphy's Rio competition, we won uh, second in our division and best overall visual, so best visual, so all the, the visual components, the marching and choreography that we do, we want outstanding visual. We focus really heavily on fundamentals of music and fundamentals of playing, and we make that a focus daily. We went to Murfreesboro, Illinois. Uh, we finished second overall at that contest behind a really great band from Kentucky. Um, we finished second, but we also won outstanding visual at that contest. The finals energy of like being with some really really talented people is super cool so I love getting to do that again. So. My favorite memory is probably gonna be our finals right after finals announcements at uh, BOA Iowa just because like you get to talk to all the other bands and that's really cool because they're from all over like we had people from Nebraska and Arkansas and like that and afterwards you just get to talk to all of them and it's really cool. With Allie Johnson behind the camera, this is Naya Banderman for Around OHS. I love seeing hard work and focus pay off for the band, especially since it can be hard to stay focused with so many distractions. Speaking of distractions, phones are a huge one in classrooms. However, some teachers are finding ways to prevent that. Dom and Adam take a look at the school's opinions on phone pockets. Today, more teachers are using phone pockets than ever before in order to keep students less distracted and more concentrated on their assignments. Surprisingly, some teachers have varying opinions on the use of phone deals during class, as well as some students. Um, this is my first year that I have taken phones every day. Um, I just feel like, as a teacher, it's my job to make sure that the students in my class are as successful as they can be. And my previous year's teaching, I just felt like the phones created too much of a distraction, and I want to take that away just to make sure all students have the tools they need to succeed. Um, I would say engagement is way higher, interactions between students uh, is better, more positive, and there's more of them, and uh, scores on exams are higher this year. I mean, I'm not a big fan of just immediately having them come in and put their phones up just because it's kind of like a, a liability thing and it's 
you know, these are expensive devices. I don't want them to get lost or stolen or whatever. So if I can avoid it, then yeah, I, I don't really want to use this, but I mean, I'll probably keep it up in the classroom no matter what, just because like I said, it really deters kids from uh, wanting to get out their phones. Now that teachers have given their reasoning, let's get to students' opinions. We shared a Google form to compile data from around the school. A resounding 72.4% said they did not like phone pockets. At the same time, however, more students said it does not distract from learning. But a resounding majority said no, they do not impact learning. Here are some actual student responses. Um, I don't really like it, but I can understand it. I think that you have to like earn, like I think if you are a student that chooses to be on your phone during class, you have to put your phone in the pocket. But if you can show that like you're like mature and like understanding that you can keep your phone and show that you won't be on it. With that being said, I'm Adam Wiedemann with Dominic McEntee. That concludes our segment of Round OHS. While certain classes are cracking down on phone pockets, I heard another kind of competition is heating up amongst the teachers. I heard that too, and it involves fantasy football. Sarah, Glenn, and Zoe tell us more about Social Studies Fantasy Football League. Some teachers at Oakville have a unique hobby. Let's hear about the Social Studies Fantasy Football League. So fantasy football is like a game that you play that awards individual players and defenses points and you can like draft people from different teams to different positions. Miss Kennedy, myself, Mrs. Conroy, Mrs. Beck, Mrs. Hartman, and Miss Novak. So just the girls in the history department. I think most of the guys of our department have a fantasy football league and I was like, well, I wanna play. And so then I made one uh, and now it's just the history girls. We have a lot of fun. We don't really like talk a lot of dirt to each other. We don't really like have a lot of trash talking, but we do enjoy playing. It's fun. Hey, also, I could see it separating us because, you know, there's been some corruption and some um, shady stuff that's happened. Uh, Miss Conroy is corrupt. Mrs. Conroy last year changed the rules to the trading after like when we hit playoffs and she didn't tell anyone because she was in, she was the one in control of all of it. Yes, we definitely have some rivalry. People may say that I'm a corrupt co commissioner, but if they say that, they're lying. Um, but no, it does make me excited just because like, I know some of my students do fantasy football or like they're into football. And so every week we can kind of look at the matchups and I can get their opinions. So that's fun to do. We talk a lot about it in our um, history group chat. And uh, I mean, I don't really talk football, but I do like to send whoever I'm playing, like, hey, I beat you, awesome, or wow, you did awesome. Women can play fantasy football too. With Gwen and Zoe behind the camera, I'm Sarah Brand for Around OHS. It's nice to see how they support each other, even while they're competing against each other. You know who else offers support in our school? The student behind the mascot. Will and Emma have the story. With football season rolling, we see a new person on the field, and behind that mask is someone new. This is my really good friend, Sawyer, he was ugly and he came up to me and asked me if I wanted to do it because I was tall. We can only imagine what it feels like to be inside the suit. Being in the suit, suit is like not being able to see and wearing a hoodie and sweatpants on the Stairmaster for an hour. I mean, usually I'll go out around like 7.05, so like student sessions come in, and then I go mess with teachers for a little bit. Um, and then I'll go to the student section, get them hyped up, maybe run the flag one or two times. I guess I'm more outgoing, because in the city you don't really care. Like, you can't care what you're doing, because you're there for the, mainly the kids, yeah. I just want to get more out of my shell, you know. With William Bishop behind the camera, I'm Emma Burchett for Round OHS. It's great to see such a tradition being carried on by the new Oakley. This tradition could never have happened without our alumni, some of which are even teaching here today. Blake and Selma quiz some of our OHS alumni. Did you know that some of your favorite OHS teachers went to Oakville? I'm Selma. And I'm Blake. And today we're asking Oakville alumni staff some throwback questions with a twist. Let's go. <laughs> what year did you graduate from Oakville? Long time ago, 1992. Look at that. Could you sign this for us? Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, back before the receding hairline went further away. <laughs> Show it to the camera that proud. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gertis. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gertis. Can we ask you a few questions really quick? Just right here. Can you just put that up? Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Success. What was your favorite memory of high school? Uh, I think I really enjoyed all the dances, prom, homecoming, junior ring, all that stuff. So it was a good time, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful picture. Did you guys find that downstairs? Yes, we did. It's the same, right? Abusi, are, are we okay to come in? Yes! Go, go, go! go. Alrighty. You were an Oakville High School alumni, correct? Yeah, I'm a big loser. <laughs> what year did you graduate and what was your favorite memory of high school? 1997. Um, and my favorite memory of high school was probably when I graduated. It made me cooler than everyone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Handsome. Very handsome. What's up, buddy? Looking good, brother. Girl. Uh huh. Until next time, I'm Blake. And I'm Selma for Around OHS. I'm sure a lot has changed since they've gone here. Absolutely, and not just the people, but the slang and trends. Yeah, they probably don't have ASMR then, but we do. And Blake and Phoebe go tiger walking to find the best ASMR. This is a S M R Tiger Walk in. Blake, what's your favorite ASMR? Phoebe, what is your best ASMR? Coda, 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 coda. Let's go to lunches and see other people's ASMR. And listen, you can get any people as ASMR. We're scared. What is your best ASMR, Nina? Do you have an ASMR? Oh my god, ASMR, hold on. Um. ASMR? Do you have an ASMR? Tom, do you have ASMR? No. <sighs> what is your guys' best ASMR? your best ASMR. Ooh, check this out. <laughs> She's chewing. <laughs> Do you have ASMR? Perfect. Excuse me, what is your best ASMR? What's that? <laughs> okay. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> With Haley Conaway behind the camera, I'm Phoebe Real. And I'm Blake Bronick for Around OHS. That concludes the show. I'm Avery Klumpers. And I'm Emma Burchett. And that's what's going on Around, Around OHS. OHS. One thing I really remember is parallel parking my parents' minivan full of all my friends on graduation day in the Oakville parking lot. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. So sweet. Alrighty, well.